won the Calypso Monarch titles on eight occasions, the Road Match title on six occasions, and he has also won the Calypso King of the World title, the only two occasions that it has been held. It's really a special treat, therefore, to present to you tonight the Calypso King of the World, Dr. Slinger Francisco, the mighty Sparrow. Good evening. Good evening, Sparrow, and welcome to Calypso Showcase. Thank you, thank you. Well, contrary to what Trinidad Rio says, I think you must be the most traveled Calypsonian. What's been like since, since uh, Carnival? Uh, well, we've traveled up and down the Caribbean islands and to certain parts of the United States and Canada. Well, I had an opportunity to look at your itinerary for the month of June, and I got tired just <laughs> looking at it. Where have you just come from? Uh, we came in from St. Lucia, Dominica, Antigua, Nevis. Uh, every place I go, they tell me um, Aloes was here, <laughs> Baran was here. Mm -hmm. So I'm sort of, you know. Well, you're back now to, to do a little duel with, um, with Aloes. Yeah. Uh, that's coming up what, tomorrow night and what, Friday? T tomorrow night, tomorrow night. Uh, and, and they're having another one on Friday. Yes, sir, but the demand has been so great. Now, we're going to talk a little bit more about that later on in the program. But what we want to do for us is continue the life of the Mighty Sparrow from 1978. You'll remember last week we covered the period from 1955 to 1977. So we want to bring you all the way up to 1992. So let's take a look at the Mighty Sparrow. <laughs> Somebody said, free the bloody slave. I was then put out on the street. I had no clothes, I had no food, and no place to sleep. I had no education, no particular ambition. This I cannot conceive. Got my native culture and live like a vulture from the white man. I had to steal. He made me work. I said I work. Oh Lord, no pay. And then I toil, I toil, I toil, I toil hard each day. Now, 1978. A little uh, special tune which you might not have thought would have got very popular, Natasha, do you hear me? Yes, well this again was a play on some of the, um, uh, the Yoruba words. This is the Nigerian words. But you also sang on Idi Amin that year, so the trip to the Af Africa might have influenced those um, topics. That's right, because at that time we were all uh, concerned with um, Africanism. Um, every, uh, the movement was back to Africa, anything African, the dashiki came in and the Afro hairstyle and everybody was into it and it stayed with us for quite some time so it was quite normal and natural to fall right into the, um, the African language. Well, so one thing that came to our knowledge that year was the fact that you had a tune which has spent 27 weeks on a European chart, only a four breaks his own out. Where did you find time to make that in between? Well, what happened is um, I did this song. Now, first of all, I met um, the guy who did it originally, a guy called Arthur Plysock. A very deep voice, something like um, Billy Eckstein's Sparrow. You gotta learn this song, you know. What? When you 
the years, you've always had this um, idea of presenting your calypsos with costume, with flair, with everything. Robot, 1979, I think, was the epitome of that. That's right. I had batteries and everything mm -hmm. doing the, the robot dancing. With <laughs> Instead of brains in my head, a small sensitive computer with complete data. Yes, I'm equipped with laser, telescopic eyes and radar. That's why I feel that I am real. When Mr. Kid Breaker get hot, I could whine better than John Travolta. I'm a robot, whining with precision. See me, I'm a robot, dancing in slow motion. Over the man designed the plan, it was fine because I'm the only robot man today could whine I'm a robot for carnival in 79 People have talked a lot about presentation of Calypso and what makes for good presentation what in your opinion is good presentation in Calypso? Well it all depends on what the topic is and if you stay close to it um, and make people begin believe it's real um, then I would say that's good, good or great presentation. Uh, you can be presenting something about a, a racetrack scandal and you're dressed like a judge in the court. If you're dressed like a jockey, whatever the real essence of, this, of the song is, when you're talking about racetrack, bacchanal, whatever happened, you're dressed like a jockey, have a whip, put on your cap, and so on, I think you're portraying the, char the character. Other good tunes, 1980, Wanted Dead or Alive, London Bridge is Falling Down. That's right. Wanted Dead or Alive. This was one of my better songs around that time. Of course, I had what I had before that. I had um, um, uh, Ayatollah. Ayatollah, telling Ayatollah, watch your tail because you have America. You have the tiger by the tail. Mm -hmm. And um, somewhere along the line, this tiger, uh, as soon as you let it go, he's going to eat you up. And, uh, well, it didn't eat up um, Iran, but Iraq got the brunt of it. And uh, maybe Saddam Hussein should have been listening when I was warning the Ayatollah. <laughs> um, Wanted Dead or Alive was observation again. Um, Pak Chong Hee and um, um, Idi Amin and Gary and people from all over the world at the same time seem to have had a problem. Uh, General Samosa from Nicaragua and you know it all happened at the same time so again a keen sense of observation and brought that one out. The rule of the tyrants declined the year 1979 from Uganda to Nicaragua bombs and bullets all the time so they corrupt, so they bad. So it's coup after coup all the while. Human rights, they violate, they thought they were too great. So in this place, now they live in exile. Gary is a wanted man. Idi Amin is a wanted man. The Shah of Iran fighting hard to survive. He too is wanted. Get him alive. A nice little...